Welcome to the latest episode of the High B Buzz. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by former Hibs striker Grant Holt. Grant, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good. It's great to have you here. Um, I want to take you back to June 2016 when you joined Hibs. Just talk us through the move, why you, why you came to the club. Um, it was t- it was bizarre, really. Obviously, I knew uh, Neil Lennon from my time at, um, at Forest, so um, I kind of just finished at obviously Rochdale. I knew he was on a free. He gave me a call and said, look, would you be interested in coming up? Obviously, being from Carlisle, I knew all about Hibs and the, everything that came with it about the Scottish League. So I just had a conversation. He said, look, well, why don't you? We'll get you a flight up, come and have a look around and, and see what you think. So um, I got the flight up, had a little walk around, got toured round. I was here, I was going to stay up for a couple of days anyway, then obviously go back to Carlisle. And um, he just said, well, why are you here? Do you want to do a bit of training? They suddenly joined in, done two days training, and then literally got off the contract that you want to take in. Quite like the boys at the time in the group, I was like, a good, good opportunity for me. So, and that was literally it from the space of coming up for a look around, signed, and then and away we went, kind of thing. What was the mood at the club like at that point? Obviously, it was on the back of the Scottish Cup final win, but equally, they missed out on promotion. Yeah, I think that in terms of the balance of be, being the Scottish Cup and winning it for the, for the first time in, in that many years, it was just literally great. But obviously, the disappointment was still lingering about the aim was to get us out of the league. So, I was under no illusions. My job was to get a decent one in Europe, let the fans have a good time with it, and then um, and then get through and, and try and win, win as the league, really. That was the, the mandate. But look, they, they had a good group of players. We were fortunate enough that we had, I fell into a really good group of players here and, and it suited. And I think I brought a little bit of something different for that group as well. Talk to us about that, that group of players because it was some squad, loads of characters. Yeah, it was, and, and all different ones. You had a really good senior group, obviously still here, Darren and Dave and Louie and everyone like that who'd been here for a while. You had like Marvin Bartley, myself, Brian Graham and people like that came in. And then you had obviously the young lunatics, McGinn and Foyle and uh, Cummins and, and all, all the shenanigans that came with that. So we had a really good group and we brought in some good loan lads like Andrew Shinney, we had Dylan McGee. Up and, so we had a really good group. Everyone got on well together. There's names in there that you could probably keep going with the list. Um, but we just worked. We just had a good unity between all of us. It, every little group or thing brought something different. So we, we had a few lads who were living around here as well who travelled up who were by themselves. So we, we had good continuity. Yeah, and with the lads, there was a Thursday club. Yeah. We used to have a, every Thursday club was always Nando's. So we always had a group of seven, six or seven of all go Nando's on a Thursday down the Omni Centre, get our Nando's and then away we went. So it, it's just trying to get to... Look, when, you, when, you're, when you're away and you're, you're in a group and you're trying to go for titles, it's about getting the bond and getting the, the unity and, and that was something that definitely helped a, a group of us. So. Yeah, and you, you mentioned obviously the taste of, of European football. What, what was that like for you? I think that was your first taste, right? No, I'd, I'd done it at Wigan. I'd, I'd, we'd done it at Wigan, but it was like... To do it again was was really good, and, and to actually go and, and go out there with with the players. And unfortunately, obviously, we, we lost on penalties, which was a which was a shame. John McGinn just couldn't take his chance. Um, so I still don't know why I wanted to go first. Anyway, that's a different, different story. But um, no, it was unfortunate. I thought we we had a good chance. I think if we got through, I think we'd have a good chance the next thing. But it was a good experience for us. Um, it was good to get through um, the first round, but it was good to get out because we needed to really focus on the league and, and get it out at the time we did. It gave us that little bit of we've seen it and now we need to move on and, and win the league and, and that's what we've done. Yeah, I guess going into that season, like you say, there must have been a, a lot of pressure on getting a club the size of Hibs back into the top flight. There's always pressure because everyone, you're everyone's challenge, aren't you? Whoever you're playing, Dunfermline and things like that and teams and the coming to you and it's all about St Mirror and they don't want there to, to go and do well. So it's the biggest challenge every time you go to Hibs and the thing is, like I said, we turn up to different grounds and we're taking 3,000 fans so there's always an expectation it doesn't matter if you go home or away you're always basically at home regardless of when you go and as we know about the fans here they expect a certain level of uh, performance they expect a level and, and they deserve that performance because they're back the cells they, they travel, travel in numbers they, they turn up a weekend in numbers so they expect us to do a certain thing so there was always that pressure I think you'd gone on for too long it had to be the year that we'd done it I think if we hadn't done it that year I think there'd have been a massive riot basically because we needed to do it, especially with the squad we had. Um, and I said that at times we, that pressure sometimes I think got to, got to some of the lads a little bit, but I think as a collective, I think we managed it quite well. Yeah. What were the standout moments for you during your year here? So I remember at the start of the season, there was a screening for the Scottish Cup. So I didn't have to go. It was all the other players needed to go if you wanted to go. But I thought, no, I'll go and watch it. It'd be interesting. Because I remember them winning it, obviously. And I remember seeing the celebration afterwards because 
being from Carlisle, we used to watch all the old firms and everything like that and the games. And obviously it was BBC Scotland, so we used to get all the derbies and everything on there anyway, uh, just being just over the border. So I thought, well, I'll go and watch it. And I watched the thing and it was really, really good, the way it had been done, the way the thing. And I remember hearing um, them singing Sunshine and Leaf and the atmosphere that would came with it. And I said, I was like, a bit of a hair on the back, it's a bit of a cliche. But I remember hearing it, I was like, at some point I need to hear that song like actually ringing out, especially if you get a midweek game or whatever, it's always better with the lights on and this and I said, at some point I need to hear that song. I always thought it'd be when we were in the league and having the party, which we, we did anyway. Um, but the fact that when we got hearts to actually be playing the derby and also because we were such the underdog, everyone thought, for some reason, everyone thought they were going to spank us. But we knew from, we knew that we were better than we could hold our own with anyone in the, in the Premier League. We knew we were good enough to do that. So we knew we had a good enough squad. The squad was far too good for the, for the championship, so we knew. So when we got drawn against, there was nothing in our mind that we were going to beat them, especially at their own ground. We still probably should have beat them there, um, which bizarrely they thought they were the better team on the day. But that, that's another uh, story for another day. And going into the game at home, we just knew. So to actually get on the score sheet, to actually win, to actually beat them, to actually be standing there walking the pitch, and I said, under the lights and here in Sunshine and Leaf is that moment of like, that's what I wanted from, from that, that time. So it was a real positive for me, the game, because I, I think, and also it was positive for the boys because it gave us that bounce again to go, right, we've just beat them. So we're going to other grounds now, we're good enough to go and beat anyone. And that was probably the bounce that we needed to go and really go and take the league by storm and get it done dusted. Yeah, talk us through that, that celebration then. Um, it came about through Marathon Bet. So Marathon Bet were given £500 for every every goal. So we'd done a thing, I think it was me, <laughs> Louis Stevens. I remember Louis done his and he'd done the Ket Spire thing that he had to kick the the um, the board in and he actually kicked the board and nearly broke his toe in here. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to use that one, Lou. I think it was me, Louis and... Was it Dave? It was, one of, it was Dave or one of them. So anyway, they went with... Everyone voted. It was my celebration. It was the incredible Holt thing. Um, but as we were doing it, we had to bring our own. So the girls had said to me, look, I'll do a roly-poly. And it's when the dab was going about. So like, do a roly-poly, do the dab. So um, I thought, well, when I'd scored, I thought, well, I'll do both. So I'd done the, the girls one and then realised, oh, I better do the marathon vet one, we don't get any money. <laughs> so it was just quite iconic that we'd done all the campaign. They were giving £500 to, um, obviously, the charity and stuff. So it was, it was quite good to tie it all in. But it was a great, great night. I said it was just disappointing. Obviously, we went to the semi-final and... If it started me, we'd have probably won it, but yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll never know. I can imagine when you've just scored a goal, trying to remember to do that celebration is yeah. quite difficult, as, especially as there's in a like, game like lads that. going everywhere, as there's like fans running the pitch, <laughs> as there's like just euphoria in the stadium was a little bit collected, but I say it is good. In my role covering Hibernian FC home and away, I'm constantly using my phone, tablet, or laptop, and I know the importance of staying safe online. That's why I use NordVPN. By using NordVPN, this protects my personal data and bank details from hackers and gives me peace of mind whilst traveling and working on the move. Thanks to our great partnership with NordVPN, you can grab your exclusive deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash highbees or use the code highbees to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan, an additional month for free and a bonus gift. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. How much did you enjoy the Edinburgh Derby experience? Obviously, the atmosphere is always incredible. And then to, to win one and have that special moment. Yeah. It, well, yeah, that was it. You, that's what you come for. Look, I'm not going to sit here and th- my, my whole plan was to come for, um, for a year and then build on and, and hopefully get them up and then go on the, the Premier League. It didn't come to that in, in the end. Um, not by my choice or the people's, but... Um, it was one of them things, you, you want to test yourself against the best, you want to play in the big games and obviously you're getting a test event, playing against Aberdeen as well. Um, I knew I could easily play the year later in the Premier League, other people didn't. But it, it was good to have them moments. I said I'm fortunate, I said I had one year here, I think I'm re- the only thing I was disappointed about, it didn't come sooner. I'd have loved to come, obviously I couldn't have, but I'd love to come a couple of years and I had two or three years here because I, I absolutely loved it, I think in terms of the way the club is, the way I was, I think it suited. And I think they enjoyed what I'd done and vice versa. And I think if you're probably after fans, they'd have loved to see me two or three years earlier and actually be in the club. So, But that's football. Unfortunately, you, you don't get that. But I'm lucky that I've, 
I had a great year. I absolutely loved it, and I got friends, and and it's great to be back today, even coming seeing Dave and Daz and and Paul and stuff like that. So no, it's good. Yeah. What was it like at the end of the season after there's all that? pressure from from the supporters to get back up from inside the club from the demands that you set yourself in the dressing room to to win promotion to win the league and have your hands on that trophy. I think once we knew I think once we knew that we were going to win it we, there was never in doubt we'd win it as soon as we knew what we needed to do to win it, it was never going to be but to actually get the relief and get it finished was was great to get it done to have all the celebrations to lift the trophy and and do all that and have a good night out when don't we need to do um for me, it was probably when we lift the trophy a little bit bitter because I knew that was probably the end. I don't think anyone knew externally, but I knew that was... I hadn't been told that, but I knew that that was me done. So it was kind of really bittersweet kind of thing because it was nice to walk around the pitch, have the trophy, show the fans, get appreciation. Um, but it was obviously on the other side, you knew... I knew that it was going to be probably the last time I'd done that. So it was probably a little bit thing, but we still enjoyed it. We still had plenty of drinks and stuff like that, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I was going to say, tell us about that night out with some of those characters. Um, from yeah. what you can remember. Yeah, anyway. interesting, yeah. Um, I think we were, we were quite... We, look, we, we had some good times during the whole season, so we, we knew when we needed to go out as a group. We knew when we needed to have drinks as a group. We had a good captain with Dave and everyone kind of knew we had a good real bond we had good Christmas dues we had everything with it so um, we just had a good group and everyone got on so well so it was an easy kind of transition but in terms of obviously when, when you league, win the leagues and stuff you've got to go out and enjoy yourself some got in later than others some <laughs> when the old men maybe went a little bit earlier than younger ones <laughs> but um, you know it was good it's um, the memories it doesn't matter what level it is you can talk about lifting it in the championship that it doesn't really matter it's to to win any trophy to win as a group to to work that hard all year and Scotland is hard um, when you're going to certain grounds in certain certain times of the year and, and the wind's coming sideways and the rain's coming down especially in the championship with some of the some of the um, some of the grounds um, it was tough so um, you've got to allow yourself that time to chill out and, and, and really sit back and enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy them moments, they don't come round. Yeah. Unfortunately, there'll be people who play the whole career and maybe never lifting a trophy or anything like that. So you've got to enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, obviously, kind of after your, your professional days, um, we have to touch upon something that caught all the headlines. Um, becoming a wrestler. Just just talk us through that. It just went absolutely mental from, like, nothing. Um it, it all came about, I was at Barra at the time, and I'd, um, there's a young kid who, the wrestling company, or w, WAW, who, who um, I, I know down in Norwich, the really good guys, um, they were basically doing a charity event for a young lad who, um, who had cancer at the time. So they wanted me to go in, do the old usual slap, blah, 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 and this and that. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll come and do it. And I couldn't do it in the end. Fixtures got moved, blah, blah, and I hate letting people down. So I was like, oh, it's moved, but we'll do it next do another one, I'll do it, or blah, blah, And I actually finished playing, so I was done. So I was like, knew I'd finished playing, I was going to go and do it. So I said, I'll tell you what, why don't we do an event, do a little bit more, do it properly, get a bit more money and give the uh, Big C charity more money. Um, cause, because of my relationship with, obviously, with Ben, who's, who's here now, um, I've got a good relationship with him and his team. I was like, do you think we could do a wrestling event at Carrow Road? And then the Ben and the other Ben, Ben Tunnel, was like, absolutely, because Ben's a massive wrestling fan so it's like absolutely big Ben's like not a problem who we getting who can we get da, da, da. so within him and the other lads we managed to do this massive event so we've gone from basically doing like a 200 people in a community sports centre to four and a half thousand fans on Cairo Road and then obviously we plotted the journey to get to this journey knowing that it'd sell tickets and before I knew it like it'd gone worldwide and da 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 and I think like, this is just ridiculous um and then, yeah, so we had uh, done the event, got a re really good money, give it to charity, and then and, and that was kind of le me leaving at the pinnacle. But I get it's just bizarre. I get asked more about wrestling now <laughs> than, like, football. <laughs> Everyone wants to know why, why you do it. Because I think it's I think because the era in, in the 90s and wrestling was quite big and everyone watched it because it was kind of this flamboyant thing. So I think everyone intrigued about it. So it was, um, no, it was great. I absolutely loved it. It's hard work. Hard work. People just think you can go and jump in the ring. I was going to say, how it. did it compare? How oh, it it's, compare? So, it's so much higher than football in terms of like you, what you're going to do, what you're going to remember, what, the, the way it is. And you, you can't just jump in because it's dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, you could, you could hurt, not, not as much yourself, yourself or somebody else because the holds and the, the grips. So there's a lot of work goes into it. So it's not like you can just go, well, I'm not going to do it for 12 months and I'll come back and, and do it. So now I think, unfortunately, that's my. Uh, 
at the moment, that's it. Unless uh, I get a big offer from someone and someone decides <laughs> to get me in the Royal Rumble, then that'll be about it, I think. Three out of three, though. Three wins out of three. It's amazing, isn't it? You, know, you never <laughs> lose, isn't it? So keep the run going. So I've never, never lost, so we're all right. Absolutely. And then, obviously, um, you went into your coaching role at Norwich. Um, what was that like? Is that something that you always wanted to do? Yeah, well, I was fortunate enough when I was here, because um, I used to stay up on a Wednesday when, when Grant was here. Um, I used to help out the, the development squad here, so um, it was kind of that, I was doing my badges, so it was kind of good transition I'd started doing with, with that, why I was playing and this and either. So it was a really good transition for me, so I kind of already knew I wanted to do a bit of coaching. I'd then gone to Barron and done a bit of player coaching at the end, and then Frank, uh, fortunately Norwich had took me in there to do some centre-forward stuff and some little bits of that. I then obviously went from there into the recruitment, and obviously now I've gone into uh, recruitment with West Ham so it's kind of been a good transition I think by doing the coach and doing what I'm doing now it's given me a real good balance of um, of where I want to be so I'm, I'm pretty good at the minute. Yeah, is the recruitment something obviously now at, at West Ham that you that you're really enjoying that yeah, you'll probably brilliant. Yeah. carry on throughout your career? Yeah it's brilliant I, I enjoy it so I'm fortunate enough to go and watch some really good games and, and some really good players um, and it builds up your knowledge of, of football. You see different types of things. You see what different clubs do. You see different styles. So, as a as a development tool, it's fantastic. So you can you get to know a region. Now, obviously, I've always got to have the coaching and the experience of football anyway. So it marries quite well. So I I'm I mean, really enjoying it at the moment. I think with obviously my girls are at a good age. are at school now. So until they kind of leave, I won't be looking to do much different. To be honest. Yeah, perfect. And obviously, you've been like you say, here at, at HTC today, invited back to the club by, by Ben Cancel. And you've been able to see some of those familiar faces, Sir David Gray, Paul Hanlon, Lewis Stevenson. I, love I still love everyone still because it's Sir David Gray. It's, it's, it's always stuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it is great. I said it, it is, it, it's one of them things, obviously, every now and then you, you, you get to keep in touch, but actually see them. Obviously, I'm quite fortunate. Obviously, I, I play with both Gary and Sean at, at Wigan. So, uh, obviously, Nathan was still here for Shrewsbury. Dave was obviously there. So, I know quite a few of them are still here, so it's always good to come back. I think it's nice to come back when you come a little bit later than you just finish, because obviously then it's a little bit like, oh God, I want to. I still kind of want to still get out there now. Like <laughs> Dave's training this afternoon, so I was like, I could, well, if Dave's training, then surely anyone could train. So um, the only trouble is he won't be able to do any sliding tackles because he's on the Astro, so uh, he's going to might struggle because he normally tackles to kick the ball. But um, no, it is good. Um, we've got a really good group. We had a, a sort of great group and get back and obviously. It's great. I've been going to talk this afternoon and stuff with some of the fans, which is good. So, kind of give them an insight to what happened in like like we're doing now, because I think it's um, not really many people know the story. So, no, it's good. I said in terms of with Ben and stuff. Obviously, I've known him for quite a long time now, so he's all right as long as you get around that Cockney accent. You know. <laughs> has the uh, has the training ground changed much since you've been here? A little bit. Well, this wasn't like this. We used to sit on like crappy seats that were like stuck in the corner somewhere. <laughs> but um, subtle changes, I think that's what they call it. So, but yeah. work in progress. As I said, it's it's one of the things. It's it's a long process. As I said, I remember when when Ben came into Norwich when when I was there when I was still playing when he first came in. So uh, if you'd seen our training ground compared to where it is now at Norwich, it's chalk and cheese. So. I said it's a small process. I said, I said it's, you've got to get it right on the pitch first and then everything comes in behind it. But I said for this club, they've been very lucky that some of the players that they've brought through the last few years to, to go on and sell, um, to generate that money has been phenomenal considering where, where they're at. So I said it's, that's the continuation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just finally, obviously, you obviously have a great relationship with Ben Cancel. Have you always kept an eye since Ben's kind of been up here on, on Hibs and, and how he's been getting on? Yeah, obviously, when we... Um, when I when I knew he was potentially going to come up here, he's obviously asked me quite a few questions, told me about it. Well, I kind of give him a bit of an insight of what the club is and where it's at and what I, where I've seen it when I was there. So I knew it was kind of coming for him. So I was very much for the the hip side of me wanted Ben to come because I know obviously how good he is at what he does and what he can achieve and when he when he does it. So I've seen firsthand of what he can achieve as as a football club. So it was important to see that and obviously as um, as for him, it's a fantastic opportunity for him to show everyone what he can what he can do so um, no he's a, good, he's a good guy I said he's alright <laughs> he's alright being a cockney yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's not too bad Grant thank you very much for, for joining us and I hope you've uh, enjoyed your time no here. thank you very much enjoyed it cheers